I mean, those school districts continue to provide a less than mediocre education with misrepresentative statistics, um, for example, stating that we're number one in high school graduation when we're truly not. We're actually number 24 in the country uh, and using something called special review assessment tests to get kids out of school who can't, can't pass high school proficiency tests. That's a test where a student sits with their teacher after failing their high school proficiency test and takes a special review assessment until they pass it. Right? They just keep taking it until they pass it and, they, and then they get a high school diploma and that has put forth a, a false graduation rate. There's also a program in New Jersey called STARS. STARS program provides scholarships to the top 15% students graduating from high school to go into community colleges. Of the Abbott District graduates that are leaving the school system in the top 15%, and then going into the Stars County Community College, 80% of them, eight out of every 10, have to go through remedial reading and remedial math after finishing in the top 15% in the most expensive school districts in America. You know, this is a travesty. Education is supposed to be about children. It's supposed to be about their future. In New Jersey, those school systems are about the bureaucracy and they're about the unions. And that's not acceptable. As of a couple of weeks ago, the union said, the education bureaucracy said, that we're starting to see progress in the Abbott districts. After 15 years and billions and billions of dollars, they're starting to see progress. We've had a whole generation of students go through that school system, and we've let them down. They're not prepared for the future. They're not prepared to compete. And we're bankrupting the state doing it. I have a simple solution, um, and it's an innovative solution. And, uh, and it's simply that those school districts were required to provide a quality education, meeting the state's testing standards, um, and if they cannot do so, they must give a voucher to their children, those parents of those children, so they can be sent to the school of their choice. I want to drive good old-fashioned competition and innovation within those school systems. That means if you go into a city like Trenton, where, uh, for example, Five Catholic schools have closed over the past decade, putting approximately 1,200 students into the public school system at 25,000 a student, and you start offering school vouchers. Parents will, those schools will reopen. New, creative, innovative schools will reopen. Uh, competition will drive the quality of public education. They will have to be accountable. They will have to be responsible. This is not a new idea. Very successful in Milwaukee and other parts of the country. It's time in New Jersey we gave up on the failed philosophy and simply remember that education is about children. It's not about bureaucracies and unions. And that's where our emphasis should be. We have time for one or two more questions. Uh, I wanted to know who's going to be paying for these vouchers. Well, you have a, do a little bit of math. If the average student spending in Trenton is 25000 a student, and you spend $6,000 on a voucher for a parent to take that children out to a public school, it seems the taxpayers are saving a lot of money. So it would be coming out of the same uh, state funding, you know, that goes into those school systems. <clears throat> so everybody, were, everybody benefits from that. Well, let me just ask to what extent you might be tilting at windmills. Because one of, one of the questions I often get uh, when I play a role as a Falcon candidate is, isn't everybody in New Jersey just sick to death of the situation? They all say the state's going in the wrong direction. And uh, the governor of the state of New Jersey is the most powerful executive branch, any governor's office in the country, with the line item veto, uh, appointment abilities, and something even more important, the microphone. 
the ability to get out in front of the voters and articulate and explain every step of the way the things we need to do to turn the state around. Now, if we want more status quo government, um, if we're going to elect a Republican who's simply going to maintain the status quo of the Democrats are doing, and, uh, you know, we don't have two parties in Trenton today. We have one party, the party of big spenders and the party of big government. And the taxpayers of this state are demoralized and discouraged and are looking for a new vision and a new future. Um, I truly believe that we can turn the state around and that we can do it in relatively short order. New Jersey's economy will respond like a sports car sitting at a light just ready to put your foot down uh, on the gas pedal. Um, but it needs clear and a, a clear vision and different, and not everybody's going to agree with me with what I talked about today. I'm sure the question on the library was not the answer that a couple of you guys wanted. But if, if it's just going to be the status quo, we're just going to stay the way we are, get even worse. Um, we can turn the state around, and we certainly will do it, and I intend to do it. You know, Professor, you've spoken, I think, on TV about, you know, me winning in November, um, that these visions and these ideas, which to me make eminently good sense, are going to be too hard to sell. Well, I don't agree. I think what we need is a line in the sand difference between John Corzine and myself. And the question people are going to ask is, do we want to continue the current path we're on and have four more years or 10 more years of the same, or do we want to take New Jersey in a new direction? Um, and I say it's the new direction. And I say you do that with someone who has a proven track record of implementing real change. Uh, and yes, taking on those unions and taking on these issues and, and battling it out. You know, there's a great book out there, I hope you've also read, called Miracle in Philadelphia, or at Philadelphia. And it's about the Constitutional Convention and what a brawl it was for that whole three months, fighting and arguing and almost came to fisticuffs. And, and at the end of the day, they created one of the finest documents mankind's ever produced. So. I'm looking forward to a tumultuous term, uh, and at the end of which we'll produce a better state. Uh, there's no further questions. I want to thank you again for coming. Thank and you for having me, guys. And, uh, thank you. and uh, I urge you to—I—I I, got—I I urge you to buy my book on Amazon or Barnes and Noble. I have sold more copies than Nancy Pelosi sold her book, and. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, you know, you got to love the picture on the front, right? Thank you. <laughs> you have been watching a presentation of Rosenet TV, an Internet TV channel for the borough of Madison, New Jersey. Rosenet TV is a private enterprise operated independently of the municipal government of the borough of Madison, New Jersey. Any views expressed herein are solely the views of Rosenet TV and do not represent the views of the municipal government of the borough of Madison.